Hello guys, this is Zornik here, and welcome back to episode 5 of my Kingdoms of Risha playthrough series. So, we've got, uh, let me get rid of these uh, news articles here, um, we've got our things going on here with the Golden Guard and then the Propaganda Ban. So the Propaganda Ban is a little uh, event like this, quite simple, yes or no, do we ban them or do we not? Uh, and I saw this at the end of last episode and I couldn't make my, I couldn't make my mind up, I can't make my mind up now, I'm thinking, if we ban them, there's a chance that it might become even more extreme. And then we have like extremist outbreaks or terrorist attacks or things like that. We also then get by banning them, bad relations with Volksland um, and United States of Contana uh, because of the <laughs> communist. But if we don't ban it, um, we might then find that, you know, we get sweeping communist sort of protests. So I'm not sure. I think, oh, hmm. Yeah, they've been reaching our shores. It's a spread of socialist thought among the populace. I... Ah, I can't make my mind up. I'm thinking... No. Because we might be able to get potential trade deals with the Volks and states. Uh, that are mutually beneficial to both of us. But they will probably uh, completely deny any trade deals if we, if we ban it. And I also don't... I'm not having any trouble currently with the communists. So just flat out banning them might be a little bit too extreme to start with. Uh, so the housing crisis here, yeah, that was something we covered last episode. Um, here we go. This is the next one. The private audience with the Golden Guard. Crisp morning air filled my lungs as I crossed the palace courtyard with Hugo. I was headed to a long overdue meeting with Titus regarding the Golden Guard, and my uncle had insisted on accompanying me. Mm, that's a bit that's a bit worrying. How about that? I'm glad you've arranged a formal meeting with Captain Gordian. There's much to be gained in fostering a robust relationship. Hmm. Agreed. There are substantial benefits to strengthening ties between us. More than you know, it possess an untapped potential that would pr prove quite advantageous should the need arise. Unfortunately, their current directive limits their capabilities. I'm getting ahead of myself. Captain Gordian can tell you more. Well, they all say the same. All these things say the same thing. Let's go with that one. I've never been more a loyal subject than Captain Titus Gordian. He lives and breathes honour and devotion. I look forward to seeing him live up to your expectations. You've painted quite a positive picture of himself. The, 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 the reason I'm a little bit worried is because I think Hugo's our main threat uh, to the kingdom in terms of my personal position. Whether he wants my personal position, whether he wants his son to become the next ruler, whether he just wants to have control over me. So while he's not going to do anything to me, he'll sort of like do stuff behind the scenes to influence it. So him having close ties with the personal guard is quite worrying. Um, yeah, he's also quite conservative, so he goes quite hard to, to please. But anyway, it wasn't, lot, wasn't long before we'd crossed the courtyard and reached the armory, which also served the Golden Guard's host quarters. We approached a pair of soldiers, flanked on either side of the entrance, greeted us with a formal salute. Salute back. I offer a high five. I love some of the, the things you can pick here. Hugo and I continued on our way. Upon entering, I found myself surrounded by a collection of old weaponry and armour on display. The polished shields and rusted swords appeared frozen in time. We eventually reached a training facility where we found Captain Gordian in boxing gloves sparring with another golden guardsman. The money is on Captain Gordian. What do you say, 50 Gilda? <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I, I'm, gonna, I, I'm just gonna say as a king, I must enjoy just gambling. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. Fair enough. Captain Gordian? Captain stopped what he was doing and turned to face us. He and his opponent bowed their heads when they saw me. Forgive me, your majesty. I didn't see you there. You're earlier than I expected. Hmm. No need. No need. If anything, I should be the one apologising for interrupting you. No need, but I appreciate the sentiment. I was just showing our newest recruit a thing or two in the ring. I must say, that's quite the right hook you got there. <gasps> Complimentary of professional boxing day. Hmm. Yeah, I've always enjoyed the sport, though I don't follow it regularly. You really should, though I'm a little biased. Any, in any event, we should get a move on. We have plenty to talk about. Absolutely. If you'll follow me, we can delve into the matter you're here to address. Captain Gordian removed his boxing gloves as he headed toward an entrance to another wing of the armory. Well, Your Grace, shall we? Oh. After you, your grace. Hugo and I caught up to Titus as he was stepping inside the building. 
Upon entering, we were once again enveloped, and I thought say envelopes, <laughs> enveloped by an array of antiquated weaponry and armor. Titus motioned towards the displays. I brought most of these out of storage soon after I took command. A considerable portion of what you see was in bad shape and required extensive refurbishment. I've always loved this old stuff. Same. I like what you've done to the place. You're more than welcome to visit any time. Not that you need any invitation, in any case. If you desired, I'd be honoured to provide you with the background and history of anything here. Very well, let's hear it. Certainly. What would you like to hear about first? Why don't tell me about that sword? I motioned to a broadsword prominently displayed in the centre of the room. I assumed its placement held particular significance. Terridor's Fury. Its notoriety spans back several hundred years, just after the Empire of Valgos seized Palais from Regia. Although we lost mo our most important port, we managed to keep our enemy from making further inroads into the kingdom at the Battle of Terridor. Legend has it, this sword supposedly took off the head of the Valgus army's top general. What interests me m most about this story is the parts about Palais being annexed on Regia. That's what keeps me awake at night. It is indeed a sore spot in our history. If you would like, Your Majesty, I can have the sword polished for ceremonial use. That would be great. That would be bloody great. Is there anything else you're curious about? Tell me about all that impressive suit of armour. Pointed to an intricately adorned armoured suit that stood out amongst the others. It would be the armour of King Henricus Taurus, the first ancestor from whom all members of your house are descended. After securing power in Monkeys, his dynasty maintained a stronghold over the city-state throughout the Markyrian era and, upon the foundation of the Kingdom of Regia, assumed control over neighbouring Valenkyris. Would you do that already, am I right? Hmm. But it's always good to refresh my memory on our history. What else would you like to know? I'm curious to know whatever that is. It's towards a metal coffin-like structure that stood upright. That would be Saint Mercy, our aptly named Iron Maiden, a torture device from a bygone era. Lined with spikes on in the inside, it was designed to inflict excruciating pain when closed. I can think of a few people who would benefit from such physical therapy. <laughs> Kidding, of course, this guy, jeez. You'll be happy to know it hasn't been used in quite some time. Yes, most reassuring. It was, however, supposedly used on suspected spies during the region succession. Hmm. Let's hope that it's never brought out of retirement. What else can I tell you about? Move on. Very well. This way, sir. We continued onward until we reached Captain Gordian's office on the far side of the hall. It too was adorned with a large collection of war memorabilia. Captain Gordian uh, gestured to a sitting area. Please have a seat. Don't mind if I do. Uncle Hugo sat on a sofa that looked to have been plucked from the 19th century. Sit down. I took a seat in a leather armchair close by. The captain took out a bottle of wine from a cabinet. Would you care for some wine? It's an exceptional vintage dating back to 1893 to be exact. From Regia's very own Cantuavo Vineyards. I'll have a glass. He on the job? <laughs> you should put hmm. Thanks, but no thanks. I only drink wine from 1892. <laughs> Sorry, I'm afraid I'm fresh out of wine from that year. I don't have an aversion to 1893, but I'll abstain as well. I wouldn't want to be the only one drinking. Captain Gordian put the bottle away. What do I owe the pleasure of your visit? Hmm, let's have a look at some of these things. Let's just go with number one. I'm looking to develop a clearer understanding of the individuals comprising my security detail, particularly the man who's leading them. More than happy to tell you about myself, that you might find hearing about the Golden Guard more interesting. Ooh, I don't really want to bring up the murder investigation. Uh, assuming Hugo doesn't know about it, so... Uh... Oh, actually, no, it's one of the options, okay. With Edley, could the Golden Guard help the Crown with a murder investigation? Ooh, this is exact. I'm telling you, he's sus, he's sus. That Hugo is very sus. Hugo straightened up, suddenly more alert. Titus to appear unfazed. We were granted the resources. Such an investigation would not be out of the question. Do you care to elaborate? Hmm, such an investigation might require conducting surveillance within palace walls. Understood. The guard would definitely be best, uh, be the best option for such a sensitive undertaking. Spies on me at all times, even during into a <laughs> What a question. Hmm, what do you mean to be the biggest threat to my personal security right now? Titus looked around, then turned back to me. 
The government security forces seem to have a handle on the populace, but who has a handle on them? I don't want to overstep my bounds so early into my employ, but I do believe the Azaros could pose a threat. Please don't worry his majesty with such speculations, Captain Gordian. House Azaro and House Taurus have been close allies since the War of Regent Succession. Yeah, I'm gonna go with number three. Don't be so quick to discount the captain's suspicions, Hugo. I wouldn't be surprised if the, uh, the Azaros had uh, designs on the throne. I'll try to keep a close eye on them with the limited resources the Golden Guard has been given. So this is the problem. I don't have any budget. I want to put more money into the Golden Guard. But I don't have any budget. And I'm not sure if this is the only opportunity I have or if it comes up as a royal decree. Because if it comes up as a royal decree, I can save some money next turn to put in. But if it's like a one-off thing I have to do now, then that's a bit worrying. But alas... Um, do you have eyes on me at all times? Let me have to ask that one. It's our utmost aim to protect the royal family security while respecting your privacy. You can expect that we'll be watching you and your family members in public and standing guard outside any room you enter. But what you do in that room is of no business to us. Good, that is the correct answer. Discretion is a golden guard's way. Be all, thank you. If there's anything else I can do for you, don't hesitate to ask. Thanks again for your hospitality, Captain. Before long, Hugo and I left the armory and were making our way back through the palace courtyard. I think that was a very productive meeting, if I do say so myself. Yeah, let's go to number three. As do I, there's much to be gained by strengthening ties. You are right on that count. Let's hope that our amicability continues to flourish. I have no doubt that it will. Such collaboration will only elevate but bring us closer to our goals. Hugo paused and scrutinised me for a moment. A murder investigation, your majesty. Is there something you'd like to tell me? This is what I mean. He's sus. This is why I didn't really want to bring it up in case you know, he finds out more. Uh... Yes, I'm on that for Epic. I really need to do a playthrough where I pick all these options. I, I keep saying it every episode, but I need to do it. Uh, as, I'm gonna say, as I said, I was, I was asking hypothetically. Very well. I was only wondering. You and I said our goodbyes and parted ways. I still wasn't fully sold on whether or not Titus could be trusted, but satisfied knowing that my influence over him remained strong. For now. Hmm, interesting. I don't think that meeting was as useful as it, as it could have been. Um, but we now have got a little bit more information um, about Hugo. The fact that he's very intrigued by this murder investigation. Like, the fact that he lit up when it was mentioned. Like, obviously, yeah, the king bringing up a murder investigation would make you and anyone interested. But particularly worrying about him. Anyway... Let's move on to our next thing with the, um, okay, that's the same thing, with the Wessex Region Friendship Day. This could go many, many ways, uh, so let's see how it goes. I couldn't tell if it was, the, I couldn't tell if the sky was growing darker or if it was just the tinted windows of the armoured car. A motorcade slowed as it approached the Zillay border. A concrete barrier rose up in front of us, its, its top strung with barbed wire. Mother had insisted on accompanying me to the Wesek Region Friendship Day festivities. She leaned against the window, uncharacteristically quiet. You were right, Mother. I'm absolutely fine, darling. Say, might we have a time for a quick detour once we reach town? Of course. He leaned forward and gave the driver an address. He nodded. At the border, we presented our identification documents and the official invitation from President Smolak. As we crossed, the road turned uneven. Promise me you'll get these highways back up and running when Sile is returned. If Sile would ever say that, it's at the top of my list. Factory smokestacks rose up on either side of us. Through the haze, I spotted numerous shanty towns built over the past few years to house miners and refinery workers. We entered the city and drove on for a maze of tenement buildings, their facades hastily re repainted to hide the damage, damage from the war 20 years ago. As my mother had instructed him to, the driver veered down a side street that led toward the coast. We stopped in front of a small wooden building with a collapsed roof. The front porch was partly buried in sand. Jagged teeth of broken glass lined the window frames. They say you can't go home again. Rarely do they mean this literally. She blinked back tears. This is where you grew up? He nodded. I never brought my parents here after they fled to Risha. I knew it would break their hearts. I wish they could have seen it one last time, the way it used to be. I tried to summon memories of my grandparents. They spent the last ten years of their lives in Palace Resna, surrounded by luxury, yet they always seemed ill at ease. Hmm. Yeah. I'll have it fixed up one day. It'll be our summer home again. Ship has sailed, child. Just think, 
I hadn't convinced Valero to get well and involved in our affairs, none of this would have happened. She looked down at her hands. The Wessex president back then was such an upstanding man. How could I have known he'd, get a, he'd go and get himself killed? Period of instability across all of Makopa. You were playing with fire. Would you have done differently if Vina was in danger? We both fell silent. After a few moments, she plastered a smile on her face. Enough dallying. Driver, step on it. We've got a date with a psychopath. <laughs> I love it. We returned to the main road and drove towards Smalak Square. Smalak, Smalak Square, Jesus Christ. This guy's got a statue of himself. He's got a square named after him. Christ almighty. A circular plaza in the centre of town that had once been named after Duke Fedo Sazon. A silver stretched limousine was parked just in front of the square. Our driver stopped and we exited the car, flanked by our guards. Say what you will about Smalak, he never makes a dull entrance. A dozen uniformed soldiers hurriedly got into formation around us and the limo. The door opened and Victor Smalak stepped out. Your Majesty King Romus, Queen Mother Estella. He made a sweeping, exaggerated bow and straightened with a grin. Welcome to Valen. Please, make yourselves at home. Thank you, Mr. President. Who is this Mr. President? Call me Victor. We're friends, right? He gestured out to the square, where a colourful banner reading 24 years of Vesek region friendship hung above a trio of gleaming ta of gleaming tanks. Wow. Um, nothing symbolises friendship like heavy artillery. <laughs> Exactly! Who doesn't love tanks? Today's audience certainly does. The square was surrounded by grandstands, one side decorated in the colour of Welland's flag, the other in Regia's red and gold. I heard loud cheers emanating from them. I invited the finest representatives from both of our countries to join us for this special occasion. Follow me if you will. A semicircular stage was set up in front of the tanks. The crowd roared as we crossed the square and made our way over to it. Looking up into the grandstands, I noticed armed guards standing on every level. A captive audience! That would explain the enthusiasm. <laughs> Quite literally a captive audience, my goodness. Um, but they are happy. They don't get many excuses for celebration around here. My mother and I took our seats. Victor stepped up to the microphone. Vesex, regions, people of Zille. Two dozen years ago, the glorious country of Wellen was given custody over this land, a great honour and a tremendous responsibility. Wellen didn't only gain new territory that day, we gained new friends. He gestured meaningfully towards the region side of the stands. After a few seconds, they broke out in scattered applause. My mother muttered a harsh sounding curse in Zile dialect. Hmm. Quiet, we're supposed to play nice, remember? Together, we have overcome war, repaired our economy, and made great strides in science and industry. Even the decision of the Taurus family to ally with Rumberg, a nation that obviously wishes well and harm, could not diminish the beautiful bond we have formed. I look forward to strengthening that bond for many, many years to come. He stepped to the side and pulled a rope attached to a flagpole. A massive Vesic flag unfurled, and a much smaller region one. Oh my goodness. Jesus Christ. I, I, I need to be my best behaviour here, I feel like, because I want to get Zille back without any real problems, so we need to put up with a bit of crap from this douche. Um, because if, if we do interject or stuff like that, I think he'll make it very, very difficult to negotiate terms. So let's let him finish his speech. Today, I'm especially delighted to be blessed with the presence of Regis new king, as well as the queen mother, of course. They are heirs to a long, proud legacy, one that would have been shattered at well and Regia not made the fateful decision to work hand in hand. On that note, please give a warm welcome to King Romus Taurus. I stood up. The region's side of the stands immediately erupted in loud, authentic sounding applause. I think that, I'm not sure if that's always going to happen, or if that was because he funded the, in the last episode or the episode before, we funded the, um, uh, committee or the, oh, the, the group who like boost culture for Regia. In Zele, I'm not sure if that's why it happens, but we'll have to see. Uh, my fellow regions. Honoured to be here in Zele on the anniversary of our historic treaty. Hmm. Okay. It pained me to it pained me when my father signed away this beautiful part of Risha. Yet I know it was for the greater good. Exactly, yeah. Let's be quite assertive, but not rude. So yeah, in one year, Risha will re resume governor. Uh, governorship of Zile, but I hope that will not mean an end to our country's friendly corporations. 
I pledge to support regions and Wessex alike to the upcoming peaceful transfer of power. Again, asserting the fact that we are getting this land back. If we get the, the people on side to agree that it's going to be done peacefully and everything like that, if Victor Smack doesn't agree to the deal, then the people hopefully back us. Um, long live our friendship. Both sides of the sands applauded. Victor gave me an appraising glance, then readjusted the microphone. What a speech! The king's got charisma! We have a terrific evening of entertainment lined up, but first, we must commemorate this landmark meeting of world leaders with a traditional triple tank salute. There was a rumbling from behind us as the three tanks aimed their barrels into the air. My mother and I looked at each other. Hmm. That's something I've heard of this tradition. Victor Smalak special. Victor raised a finger up in the air. One! Tank on the left fired, sending a plume of gold-coloured smoke high over the stands. The crowd gasped in excitement. Two! The gun mounted to the tank on the right went off. This time, the smoke was uh, magenta. Three! His count was interrupted by an unidentified voice in the distance shouting, For the king! Victor whipped his head round in shock. A frenzied look in his eyes. I turned to my mother. Oh my gosh. Who was that? I don't... Deafening blast! Much louder than the two that had preceded it, echoed from the opposite end of the square. I turned towards the source of the sound and saw the Vezek side of the stands engulfed in flames. Oh gosh! Oh gosh! Oh no! I'm now worried that my. Because they shouted for the king, so I'm now worried that my budget in the. Like, uh. Culture Act or whatever it was, the Culture Council has actually, like, created region extremists here. Protect Estella. Oh my god, guys, this is terrible. Your Majesty! Titus rushed to our side, going at the ready. Screams of fear and confusion were rising up from all around. What's happening? Security breach, sir. Victor stood beside us at the, on the podium. His own gun, he's only got his bloody gun. He, he, <laughs> how the hell has he got a gun as a present? That's great. He was surrounded by a thick cordon of Vezic guards. We've got to get you out of here. He and Smilax guards exchanged a series of hand signals. The crowd had begun fleeing in every direction. Titus grabbed my arm and swiftly started ushering me away. I took one last look back. Smoke was now rising from the Vezic grandstand. Part of the structure had collapsed. The soldiers were working to free the people trapped underneath. The next few moments were a blur as we made our way through the panic hordes of civilians. Victor's limo pulled up and Titus roughly shoved me inside. Thank God you're safe! My mother's voice shook. She and Victor were sitting across from me looking dazed. God, yeah, I'm now thinking, crap, has it gone against me to put the budget in it? I thought it'd be like a peaceful thing, and maybe it's created extremists, but it now makes me think uh, there's a wasted opportunity to not buddy put it in Palais, where it could cause strife, but, oh my god, what a, what a what a time to be alive in the Kingdom of Regia. We're gonna have to get to the bottom of, bottom of this. It's no great mystery, your majesty. Well, I could fire in his eyes. If your people have anything to do with this, there will be a price to pay. He kept his eyes on me as the car began pulling away. Ah. Oh. I bet you, actually, I bet you, Victor Smilax set that up himself. Perfect excuse to not give the land back to me. Oh, well, region, like, there's a region's terrorists are bombing the place. We can't give it back. It's, 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 it's a safety crisis or whatever. Jesus Christ. Will Zillet incident disrupt fragile bomb between region and Velen? That is absolutely terrible. So I'm thinking maybe it wasn't my doing about the, the budget. It was actually, he set it up himself, I bet you. Uh, anyway, preliminary report on Friendship Day bombing incident. Vezek Intelligence has released a thorough accounting of the events of Vezek uh, Region Friendship Day. The explosion is said to have been caused by a detonation device planted on the grand stands have time to go off during the afternoon celebrations. Part of the stands collapsed in the blast, killing three Vezek civilians and injuring a further 14. Witnesses at the event heard the shout of heard the shouted phrase for the king prior to the blast suggesting a political motivation and the involvement of pro region supporters Wellens intelligence forces have indicated the group sue omina is under particular suspicion for the attack Ooh, yeah if they're under suspicion then maybe it isn't got anything to do with victor but that's worrying guys that's that's really gonna dampen stuff for us that's gonna make it harder to get back zile we've got palais to worry about as well this is not good this is not good I need to strengthen my economy so I can uh, get, just get more, more stuff going, uh, ready to fund a war effort. Um, yeah, not good. Like I always said before, I want to try and keep my budgets and things like that available. So if I have events that pop up, I can do those events first. Because looking at the 
things here. The only things I wanted to do straight away was this support vehicle factory. Uh, oh, there is now a gold mine. Gets you two budget per turn. Wow. Coal mining gets you one or uh, one energy per turn. Wow, 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 wow. I really want that gold mine. We can actually afford it. It costs all of our money, but getting two budget per turn. I'm going to go for it. I literally just said that I want to, you know, keep budget available. Oh, I literally said I want to keep budget available. Right, what I'm going to do is this then. I'm going to do the um, landowner's tax. Oh, but the landowner's tax. Oh, it's so difficult. I think I'm going to have to leave it. Um, lost territorial integrity. Is that because of the Zillay incident? Oh, this is all going terribly wrong. Yeah, I really want that gold gold mine because that two budget per turn is insane. Um, that almost doubles our budget per turn. And the sooner I get it, the sooner I get it, the, obviously the more we get out of it. So that's why I sort of want to build it now. But at the same time, I'm just thinking like, you know, I want to see what what things happen at the end of the turn. But that's, that's the beauty of it. As people said, like, if I wait a little bit, I, at the end of the time, I might, I might not spend any budget. So let's just see. Update on the Zilli incident. A few weeks had passed since the attack in Zilli. Called Lucita, Hugo, Titus and Vina to my council chambers for a security update. Titus insisted on sweeping the room before Vina and I sat down. Hugo was next to arrive, early as usual. Your Majesty, how are you faring? Yeah, I'm doing all right. So is Mother in case you get... No, I'm not going to that. Uh, I'm still in shock. How was such an attack allowed to take place in the king's presence? I can only hope Duchess of Sarah will enlighten us on that matter. Gentlemen, everyone automatically fell silent as Isita strode through the room. She was dressed in her army major's blazer with the two stars prominently displayed above her right breast pocket. Now that Crisis had struck, her entire bearing had changed. She had a commanding air about her. At ease, Duchess of Sarah. Thank you, Your Majesty. Lucita sat and flipped open a dossier. I'll reiterate what we already know. 1605 hours on December 8th, 1950, an explosive object detonated in Smilak Square in the city of Zille. It had been planted beneath the grandstands that were set up that morning. Seated in those stands were a mix of civilians and political figures who had been invited to the Friendship Day event, all of Vezic heritage. The most recent casualty report states that three civilians were killed in the blast, of the 14 injured, all are now in stable condition. Thank God, from what I saw, it could have been much worse. It's not good for us regardless. We turned a page. Based on our scant evidence available, Welland's intelligence agency suspects that region nationalist group Sue Omina was behind the crime. She looked meaningfully at Hugo. Mm, of course they'd say that. It's good that President Smilak was behind this. Yeah, 100% agree with that. I agree. Besides, I've already spoken to Rico. He had absolutely nothing to do with what happened. Hmm. I believe him. This has Vellan's fingerprints all over it. But at the same time, actually, it might be a double bluff. It might be Hugo setting it up. Oh, it's, this game is... It's got angles coming from everywhere. Hmm. Why was I not included in this conversation? Because it was super flu... I can't say that word. I don't actually know you said that word. Super, super flu... Super flus. <laughs> I'll, leave, I'll leave that one for now. You guys can already work out what it said. Sue Ormina promotes region values. Terrorism is not part of their mission. I should clarify, the group's official activities have never been violent, but individual members have been have printed leaflets calling for a more creative solution to the Wesek problem. I don't understand why Cousin Rico would even support a group like that. Queen Liza always says monarchies was in incompatible with nationalism. The crowd knows no borders. Hmm. Yes, Rico has no right using the Taurus name to serve his own xenophobic a uh, agenda. My son is of a much Taurus as you, as you or Princess Vina, and frankly, he should be commended for his efforts to protect the country from miscreants. I may, Your Grace. Why have you never once thrown your own weight behind Suomana if you, if you support its ideals? It spread his hands wide. It would do the group no favours to have an old man like me in the spotlight. They need youth, vitality. They are the future of Regia, after all. He smiled warmly at Vina. My daughter looked away. Future or not, we have no concrete proof Suomino was behind the attack. All we have is Wellen's word. And Wellen's interest to blame, pick the blame. Exactly. We still haven't ruled out the possibility that President Samalak himself ordered it. Or another party interested in weakening the both of us. 
With an increased foreign intelligence budget, we could commission a full investigation to Zilli into the Zilli incident and take measures to prevent such an event from reoccurring. How much would that cost us? A significant portion of our emergency funds, but it'd be worth it. Pardon me, ma'am, Major. Duchess? All eyes turned towards the man of the gold blazer. May I point out that you weren't present on the day of the Zilli incident. The King and I were. Prior to his majesty's arrival, my men and I attempted to clear the square of every conceivable danger. However, we could not be everywhere at once. Good point, Mr. Gordian. This event has shown how vulnerable you and the royal family truly are, and how ill-equipped my men and I are to seek out and neutralise threats to your safety. Therefore, it is my opinion that any emergency funding allocated in the wake of the Zilli attack should go towards re-expanding the Golden Guard. Lysita's jaw dropped. Captain Gordian. I trust you to, to the guard the king, but national security is not your domain. Ma'am, back in the 1800s, the Golden Guard not only protected the royal family, but was designed to carry out special missions of national importance. This version of the guard of the king's authority to conduct sensitive international investigations without getting caught up in red tape. I know you have reservations about expanding the Golden Guard, your majesty. This is precisely the kind of situation where our expertise would, prov would prove invaluable. Agreed. It's an opportunity that's undeniably worth its weight in gold. No pun intended. Oh, this is where it's tough. The split between having Lucita have her own, you know, security agents uh, and sort of national um, crime thing or more traditional, genuine boots on the ground security force that's run by me. But this is the problem. Hugo seems to have a major influence over this Golden Guard, which I don't like. But then House Cesaro, who obviously Lucita is a part of, also would have, you know, major influence over the security, which is another house that wants to become king. It's just like you're fending off from wolves everywhere. But which wolves do you find more easy to uh, to keep at bay? But I, I do think the Golden Guard are really good because they're controlled directly by me. But Lucita seems to actually be different to House Cesaro's usual with her father, you know, I think she... Didn't her father die or was her father in hospital? Um, so maybe, oh, I need to look up, wait, both. What kind of investigation did you have in mind, Captain? If I were allowed to send my men to eyes, we could confirm or rule out the involvement of individuals under suspicion in the Zillia attack. Hugo blinked. Captain Gordium, I'm all for the expansion of the Golden Guard, but not if you insist on using it to chase a dead end. With respect, sir, we don't know whether it's a dead end. And investigating an organisation with ties to the royal family is exactly the kind of sensitive mission the Golden Guard was built for. Perfect. I love it. I love how Titus says something that Hugo doesn't like. It shows that Hugo doesn't have full control over them um, and he's actually a little bit worried about them. I think that's good. I'd also get, the, if I had the choice, uh, the Golden Guard to investigate all of uh, Isa's crap going on there. Perhaps so, Captain Gordian, but the attack took place in Wellen. Any resources that go towards investigating it should be allocated there, not within Regia. She, Hugo and Titus glared at each other. Ooh, it's like a full-on standoff. The tension was broken by a knock on the door. Lorento came in, clearly out of breath. Excuse me, your majesty, my fellow councillors. These stairs never get easier. Take a moment, Mr. Squibble. Lorento sat down. After catching his breath, he continued. I've just received word from Wellen's foreign minister. President Smilak plans to make it public that region nationalists were involved in the Zilli incident. Tita's hands closed into fists. All relations with Wellen have, all, have been cordial enough that Smilak will not immediately blame the Crown, but he'll be expecting a response. He's just testing us. His government can't prove anything. Dare he insult with these baseless accusations. People are dead, Your Majesty. Someone must take the blame. May I ask you what the father you just discussing before I came in? A security response to the Zilli incident. Duchess Cesaro is requesting funds for a foreign, foreign intelligence investigation in Wellen, while Mr. Gordian would prefer the Golden Guard to be given license to investigate threats within Regis' borders. To be honest, I'd rather not waste my budget on either. Yeah, so we've got Duchess Cesaro's invest foreign investigation to prove it is President Smilak, or that it is whoever, or the internal investigation. I'm going to go for number one, because I feel like... We, I personally believe it is President Smilak. We need to prove that he is guilty. Whereas if we're trying to prove that Suomana aren't guilty, even if we found evidence to prove that, he, President Smilak would say, oh, well, that's rubbish anyway. So I want to, I want to, this one. A tricky needle to the thread, your majesty. Pursuing such an investigation might lead the president to think you're undermining his authority. Well, and there's nothing to hide. They will welcome our assistance. Investigation to Zule would also shift the focus away from Suomana and the royal family. Oh, your majesty, 
what are we conducting one of these investigations? Three budget, mamma mia. I thought it'd be like one budget. Oh, three. I want that bloody gold mine, but I ain't getting it anytime soon, am I? Goodness me. Think about it though, you definitely need to farm one of these because this is a major, major incident in the game. We want to get Zilli back, and if we don't get it back, peacefully, we're going to have to go to war. So yes, it's through budget here, but that will save me a lot of money and resources in the long run by not having to have a, a, a bloody invasion with Wellen or whatever. Um, but this is also not just about how we're dealing with the Zilli case, but also who we're funding. So here we're obviously getting Captain Gordian to prove Suomina, but then we're also increasing the Golden Guard, who I do like more than the investigators. But I like the idea of Lucita's investigation into Zilli more, so this is going to be a hard choice. The reason why I also want to go with Captain Gordion is that Captain Gordion challenged Hugo and Hugo seems to be like ruling this Suomina. So Captain Gordion's idea is more about, yes, proving Zile wrong because, well, we've investigated Suomina and they're not behind it, but not really about that. It's the fact that we're going to get Hugo, we're going to get his son and him hopefully locked up or at least investigated because we're looking into Suomina. So I actually want to go with Captain Gordion. But it might be better for the Zille case to go with Lucita. And I also want to get Lucita on side. Oh, bloody politics as a king is tough. But no, I'm going to go with Captain Gordion because I also think getting the resources for Captain Gordion means I've got better protection myself. So if a Suomina threat was against me, I've got more chance to pick it up. I'd, I like your gumption, Captain Gordion. I'll get you the resources you need to look into the Suomina and then some. Titus forcefully saluted. Thank you for your trust in the Golden Guard, sir. We won't fail you. Lucita scowled. I'm expecting results, Mr. Gordium. I'm expecting a tact and discretion, needless to say. Hmm. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty, Titus. It's still the matter of the King's public response. Do you have any suggestions? I suggest you tell the truth. You take Wellen's intelligence seriously and will be conducting your own investigation to the suspected perpetrators. Emphasizing, of course, that Sue Omina is a lone wolf that does not re represent the views of the crown. Hugo sniffed. I express your confidence that the group is innocent, which it is. I find it unwise to confirm or deny Sue Omina's innocence before more information is known, but I'll leave it to you, your majesty. It seems the next steps are quite clear, or was there any other subject that, you need, that, that needed discussion? I'm quite satisfied with our results today. Hmm... This meeting's adjourned. Yes, you're all dismissed. Enjoy the rest of your day. The others began filling out the room. Titus stayed behind. He walked up to me and looked me in the eyes. Thank you once again, Your Majesty. You have the Golden Guard's undying loyalty. Good, because there's one other investigation I'd like you to conduct for me. Ooh, yeah, let's go for it. Yes, sir. I'd like to know exactly how my father died. I have reason to believe his death was no accident. I just froze in place. He spoke in a low voice. As you know, I was there in the palace when it happened. And believe me, I have some questions of my own. Oh my goodness. Should everyone who was present that night be considered a suspect? Hmm. I am going to include Pabble. I highly doubt it is Pabble. Oh, but the, why is the game telling me? I think that, I think it's because the game wants to put the blame on Pabble. Even when it probably isn't him. But at the same time, we need to... It'd be awful if Pabble was the suspect and then we lock up like Hugo and it actually isn't Hugo. So I will include Pabble, but but yeah, I'm worried the game's gonna like make it seem like it is Pabble when it isn't. But anyway, let's go with number two. Yes, Hugo, the Grand Wiseman, my mother, Lucy to Azaro, and Pabble too. I just nodded seriously. Consider it handled. Expect an update soon, along with the progress on Suomina. I just gave a dutiful bow and left the room. Picked up, up a pen and began drafting my response to Wellen. Perfect, guys. So, look look at all these things. We've got authority increase, manpower, energy, new decrees. Let's have a look at some of these new decrees. But what have we got? Um, we've got allow free press, which just costs authority, but I don't want free press. Get out of here, free press. Imagine living in a world where press was free. <laughs> uh, we've got the gold mine and uh, the coal mine. We saw these ones earlier. Build Zile Intelligence Hub in Mare Norv Norvitus. Hmm... No one likes this one. I thought Lucita would like this one because it's an intelligence hub, but maybe not. Okay. Unless it's like a, a Golden Guard intelligence hub. Uh, yeah. Okay, never mind. So, the ones in my site, the absolute priority one is the gold mine. I really want that extra budget coming in. 
Then after that is a support vehicle factory. Looking at the... Ooh, what else would there be to do? I'm thinking if it's some of these like ones up here. Legalize... Hmm, maybe even legalizing legal substances because getting that budget in return is really, really useful. And we wanted to increase tourism. So yes, that's going to be a hit to public order, but actually getting the legal substances authorized could be big for any bit of money in and then getting more tourism. And we're not, like I said, we're not going to crack down on the drugs. Anyway, we've already got a lot of like policies to crack down on the drugs, which I'm just not interested in. So I'm going to legalize substance, legalize illegal substances, but this might hit me in the ass. But the foreign affairs minister approves it and the foreign of uh, the treasury council approves it. So sign it, get a bit of money coming in. That is four coins coming in or four budgets. Powerful King's Guard Force. The Golden Guard, tasked with the security of the monarch, has significantly expanded its ranks. This enlargement, coupled with their elite training, has bolstered their operational capabilities, addressing potential security vulnerabilities effectively. It's perfect, guys. So we've got that. Um, we've also completed some of the, the tasks we had, I believe. We've got, oh yeah, recreational narcotics soon to be available at your local pharmacist. In a radical change of policy, the palace has announced a limited legalization of certain illegal substances, including, but not limited to, the notorious Yishias and Rat Spice. Oh my gosh. This drastic change of approach follows growing international consensus that harm reduction, removing narcotics from the illegal circuit, leads to less violent crime. Funds usually reserved for cracking down on the drugs trade will now be diverted to education, addiction treatment programs, and other public health initiatives. Only licensed healthcare professionals, like pharmacists and doctors, will be allowed to sell these new newly legalized narcotics. Perfect. I actually think it's very... Uh, I don't really like to talk about real-life politics. But if we're playing a game of politics, it's probably worth it. I think legaliz legalization of... What was it? C-class drug? I can't remember what marijuana is. I think it's a B-class drug or something like that. I think it's very valuable, just for the reason it st states there. You're making it much more accessible, yes, but you're getting a lot of money from that to invest then in more welfare uh, parts. The only reason not to do it is because there's a lot of conservatives, which is why a lot of the political parties don't do it. And in this game, we're going to upset the political parties as well massively. Um, with the Hugo and Lucita, who seem to be very conservative still. But at the same time, I'm the king. Like, they can try and vote me out. Oh, wait, I'm a dictator king. So they can't do that. Uh, and that extra budget massively helps. And I actually find, in the long run, like how I personally believe, it actually is beneficial anyway. So we're getting more money from our budget and we're getting, you know, less crime, uh, potentially in the long run, from organised crime decreasing. So that is fantastic stuff. But we'll have to see how it does. Queen Beatrice greets Rumbergians in Broners. Very, very nice. Jalos Vazek Community Hold Friendship Day Vigil. Yeah. They're the only two events. So now the eyes are back on Zile. Zile statement. Oh gosh. Denounce and distance the crown from Suomana. Hmm. The press is expecting an official government statement from Risha in the wake of the Zile incident. In particular, they expect the king to either denounce or defend the nationalist group Suomana, who been accused of being involved in the bombing. Uh, I'm going to issue a neutral response. Oh, definitely not. Proclaim the innocence to him, and I'm no way. I'm just thinking, denounce and uh, distance the crown. We haven't had the evidence yet, so President Victor Smolak might have been behind it, and someone might have no nothing to do with it. I'm gonna issue a neutral response. Um, I'm gonna have to say that might have hit me badly. Uh, situations: high military manpower pool. Oh, brilliant! The military boasts a strong and well-resourced manpower pool, reflecting effective recruitment and retention strategies. This high level of personnel readiness positions the region's armed forces and advantageously for both defensive and peacekeeping roles, enhancing the nation's strategic capabilities in international standing. So, another thing, just like with budget and energy and all those other ones, where you can spend it either on decrees or you can spend it on like events that happen. I wonder if the military stuff is the same, where obviously we can recruit people. Uh, just like we're doing here, or if actually um, there'll be events like, let's say we go to war and there'll be like a battle maneuver and you have to pick between the two, but one costs you extra manpower, but it's more likely to succeed. I don't know, but it is interesting to, to know that that is uh, like the manpower is actually getting brought up there. I'm going to get some more people recruited. I'm going to get five more infantry uh, divisions because if we do go to war, remember we have to take a turn to train these guys. And I, and I don't plan to sell any more equipment just yet. So I want to get these guys ready. Um, getting 10 infantry divisions, I think is a good amount. 
to be sat there ready at like a just a, a mobility level. Because if we go to war, 10 infantry divisions with a tank and some support and then some special units down here, it's probably quite good. And like I said, I don't plan to sell the um, any more weapons just yet. Uh, so manpower per turn, we're getting 550, so that's pretty good. That, that bought. Looking at some of the decrees though, obviously do have the ones on selling the military equipment, but that is the one authority. Um, so we couldn't do that and then get budget to build, you know, like a gold mine or a coal mine because that loses up authority. So we'll have to wait for that anyway. Um, having a look now, I think our, oh, we've got regional tour assassination. Countries are popular tourist destination within the region. This growth in tourism boosts the economy and cultural exchanges, though it still falls short of achieving a significant global tourist footprint. So I'm not sure what that's about, but that sign. Okay, guys. Uh, news. King expresses sympathies in delay bombing aftermath. Hmm. Okay. Let's be alarmed by CSB's growing influence. Yeah. Very, very good. Well, and we're now neutral with this. We were friendly before, but we're now just neutral. But that is okay. Um... Got 76 arrests. Wesleyan authorities have arrested at least 76 people in the Zillay region on suspicions of a connection to the bombing, many of region and British origin. The whereabouts of many of the detained are unknown, which is starting to worry international observers. Hmm. And it's worrying. We've now got visit from Queen Beatrice of Rumberg. Let's go, guys. This is a big one. Vina, Estella, and I sat in Palace Resonance's most ornate stateroom, awaiting the arrival of Queen Beatrice Livingston. An informal supper. My sister-in-law was scheduled for the, the evening, but for now, the protocol for an official diplomatic visit had to be observed. Abel came in through the stateroom door. He took a deep breath. Announcing Her Majesty Beatrice Livingston, Queen of the Four Corners of Macopa, Defender of Castle Tsarsburg, uh, Conqueror of the Tranquil Sea, Stout Protector of the Ancient Lands of Rum, Descendant of the Most Honourable King Edward I, and the Ruler of Rumberg. He stepped aside, and Queen Beatrice entered. She was wearing an emerald green gown that matched her tiara. Vina, Estella and I rose to greet the queen. Oh god, which one do we do? Um, it's Beatrice on the cheek, I think is the, probably the correct... Oh no, but actually it's the queen! Oh god, I don't know where to get I deal with a queen. Shake her hand is very neutral. Kiss her hand is a little... I don't know! Kissing... Oh, but she is like your sister-in-law. I'm gonna go for just kissing on the cheek. I kissed my sister-in-law on the cheek. She returned the just a warm. Okay, it wasn't that big of a deal. What a pleasure it is to see you, Your Majesty. We barely had the chance to speak at the coronation. And my dear niece, she turned towards Vina. Why, you're looking more and more like your mother every day. I hope your father's proud of the lady you've become. He's on my council, you know. Oh my, so young and already preparing for the crown. You were younger than me when you got yours, weren't you? It's lovely to see you, Aunt Bay. Aunt B, I'm going to call it Aunt, oh, bloody Bay, Aunt B. Beatrice embraced her tightly before moving on to my mother. The two women gave each other air kisses, then stood back and eyed each other. Queen Beatrice. Queen Mother Estella. Tilted her face upwards, gave a short sniff. The palace looks as magnificent as always, but I fear a chat with your housekeeper may be in order. Every time I visit, it smells the f just the faintest bit like trash. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I'm with a fade of puzzled look. Is that so, Your Excellency? Funny, I do seem to detect an unpleasant draught of hot air, but only since you walked in. <laughs> wow. Bit of a bit of beef between the queen and the queen uh, the king mother. I love it, I love it. Mm. Ooh. Let's be civil, ladies. We have important state issues to discuss. Then I shall take my leave. I have a terribly urgent appointment on the other side of the palace. By all means, your highness. My chatter is far more boring than the sort of carousing you're used to. Vina, why don't you run along as well? We'll catch up over supper. Vina reluctantly nodded. Sure, Aunt B. I have the staff keep my room a ring when you're done. See you two out. Just a moment. Bubba walked Beatrice and myself over to a pair of velvet armchairs. Next to them was a table upon which a towering silver Rumbergian tea had been set up. He filled two porcelain cups for us, then escorted Vina and my mother out the door. Beatrice motioned for our attendants to wait outside. We settled into our seats. What do we owe this pleasure, Your Excellency? First things first, Queen Beatrice extended her little finger and raised her teacup up to her lips. She smiled approvingly. 
Just like my, just like home. My compliments to your butler. Now, how are you faring a year into your reign? I know you had quite the scare in Zillow. Yeah, I'm less scared by what happened than by the ramifications of it. It's the correct manner of thinking. He to say, Rumberg has been monitoring the fallout of the incident with great concern. Why? How does what happened affect you? Let's, let's stay civil, let's stay civil. Your concern is much appreciated. She nodded. Aside from my worries about your personal safety, I foresee a scenario where Wellen uses this tragedy to its own gain, and Wellen, amassing more power, is not in either of our interests, correct, Your Majesty? Mm, not as long as they have our land. Precisely. Beatrice leaned forward and held my gaze. Of course, we are, this, we are the same age, Your Majesty, but I've worn my crown for many years longer than you have yours, and I, have, and I, and, and I and my country are far more experienced at dealing with the Republic of Wellen and their backers in the CSP. You've expressed no opinion on the incident thus far. You must realize that President Smalak will see that as an admission of guilt. Have you thought about your next steps? You do if Mr. Smalak fails to relinquish his hold on Zillay, that is. Yeah, if he, if he fails to, to relinquish the hold, that is where I'm going to have to step up my shit. Yeah. Hmm. Comes down to it, I'm prepared to fight. Oh, I'm willing to say that one, but I want to try and do it through diplomacy because I, a, a, war, a war is costly. And while we'll absolutely smash well in because they have to cross a channel to get to us, we're just like fighting on land. They have already a lot of fortifications set up there. That's why it, it is worrying. Mm, if it comes down to it, I'm prepared to fight. Then you will need Rumberg's help. Mm. You go on, Queen Beatrice. Here's what I suggest, Your Majesty. As you may know, Rumberg is currently a major importer of Wessex oil. If you were to significantly reduce our imports, the financial pressure, and thus your leverage over Wellen, would be considerable. It is true, yeah. Wait, how much oil are you importing? Enough to seriously make a dent in the country's economy for our purchases ordered to, order to diminish. But in fact, my advisors and I have been speaking about forging new energy partnerships. And as it happens, Risha is about to come into possession of quite a bit of natural gas, correct? Hmm. We don't know yet. Our scientists are still figuring out the details. I see. Very interesting. I was about to propose that Rumberg purchase region energy in lieu of Wessex oil. We enrich your country and assist you with your well in problem in one full swoop. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, that is actually quite beneficial because we're cutting them well and off. But at the same time, what are the, I don't want to say ramifications, but what are the consequences? Extreme Beach was going to undercut us majorly on oil, oh, sorry, on gas price. Is it going to get us a bit too close to Rumberg that, you know, in the international sector, we get sh sharted. I don't know. Hmm. What kind of timeline are you thinking? You can cut off our orders of Wessex oil immediately, as long as you grant us a small amount of energy up front to add to our stockpile. We then give you a one-year grace period to make the to make the transition. After which, I warn you, our needs will be quite substantial. Oh, I see. So I think how it's going to work is probably don't get paid anything for it. They just like take minus three budget of energy. They might, we might actually get like one or two budgets increased to show that they're buying it, but it'll probably be quite against us in the sense that they will take minus three, but anyway, we get like two budget increase. I don't know. And they want an energy deal up front. We only have one energy, so. Hmm. Interesting, but how would region gas even reach Rumberg from here? I'm quite sure the same ships that carry out our gold trade can be retrofitted to transport natural gas in its liquefied form. I've been notified of your expansion of the Monkey's port and dockyard facilities. This will easily handle the excess shipping traffic. That's interesting. Obviously, that wasn't part of the Monkey's port, like, decree. It was just that we get extra ships from it. So, actually, this is why these decrees are useful. It's not just about what's in the decree, like, oh, we get 250 manpower from it. There is of obviously also event stuff. So I need to, I need to think about that. If I like the look of the decree, obviously the decrees like oh give me more gold, uh, sorry more budget, give me more energy. That's all great. There also is stuff like building a brand new university that might also give me new event stuff. Obviously it depends on what, which one's going on, but I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep that in mind. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so it'll be easily managed with the expansion of the port. Glad to hear. This is a serious promise. What if I can't keep my end of the guarantee? We'll have to find a more reliable trading partner for energy as well as our other materials, and I'll be most displeased. 
Would you have to replace all the ore you've been purchasing? What about only part of it? Thornberg wouldn't prefer to eliminate its energy dependence on Wellen entirely, but of course, he wouldn't want Rizzo to make an overly, any overly rash promises, so yes, a partial embargo on our end is possible. Hmm. Do you believe that Wellen can't find another customer? Believe it or not, Victor Smalak has managed to alienate Wellen from most of its neighbours. I know our partners in Grace would surely follow suit and cut their own ties. Okay, I think I have a good grasp on the particulars that you're suggesting. And, what do you think of the idea? Yeah, this is where it's difficult because, like, I don't know how much the game's asking for. It might actually only be, like, two budget, uh, two energy per turn, and I can handle that. It might be, like, four, five energy per turn, and it's just, like, insane. And yes, we're getting a power plant, but that would barely break even with it. Um, so we need extra. And then at that point, I won't even have any energy to sell. So it's all like, ooh. Hmm. Can't promise anything right now, but I'll keep your offer in mind as we should expand its energy horizons. Very well, your majesty. Of course, we'd appreciate any help stoking our hungry furnaces. Moving on to equally important matters. How are the princess's marriage plans coming along? Yeah, we could remarry with Rumberg, but I'm eyeing up other nations. So... Hmm. I want to look out for candidates. Someone from one of the other royal houses, perhaps. Very good. As you'll recall, I promised my Bradley to the Duchess of Thomsford to secure the loyalty of our country's northwestern regions. We rose on an endangered breed, you know. We've got to tend to our lineages as well as we as we would a rose garden. Hmm? Yeah, fear not. The garden of House Taurus shall remain in bloom for a long time. The help of House Livingston shall bloom on only the richest of soil. And don't forget that the rest of Great is invested in the Taurus line of succession as well. Regia is one of the, the its uh, linchpin nations, after all. Our fellow monarchies want to see a stable Regia, especially after the summit, at which we all promised closer cooperation. Keep that in mind, we monarchies uh, have to stick together. Rumbug will do its best to aid you. She rose to leave. I shall see you at supper, your majesty. Queen gave the door a swift knock. Her attendants opened it, bowing as they did so. She paused. Congratulations on your recent trade deal, by the way. Although I wouldn't trust the swords any further than I could throw them. She walked out with her gown, trailing behind her. Hmm, so she's telling us not to, not to trust Swordland. Um, I see, I see. Okay, so Regent Armed Forces, we've got our five troops there. Overview, more overview stuff. We've got average military manpower. Okay, that's literally going to be spent some manpower. That's fine. News, TSP's investments in Nibia. Chief Poverty Reduction Milestone. Okay, great. What's some of these reports? Swordish businessman Walter Tusk goes on holiday in Valenkiris wine country. Okay, that's good uh, for promoting, uh, you know, the area for tourism. Having some rich guy go there. Uh, the Cantuava uh, Vineyards in Calais welcomed the Swordish oligarch Walter Tusk and his family. He spends a night at the winemaker's luxury villa before continuing on a short tour of Valenkiris wine country. Tusk confided that his newfound newfound interest in the region was inspired by recent availability of region one in Swordland. Ah, brilliant. Uh, Volgish Heritage Week, allowed to proceed in Fort Alice. Golden Guard expands its ranks, begins the investigation. Under, under the authorization of the King, Captain Titus Gordian has tripled the ranks of the Golden Guard from 12 to 36. While Captain Gordon and his original team will stick to their original duty of protecting the King of Regia and the royal family, the extra 24 recruits have been dispatched to the province of Brennus to begin their investigation into the Sioux Omada organization. Swordish magnate Marcel Conra uh, Con uh, Conra I can't say Conrati Conranti checks in on resort construction progress. In Monkeys, acting Duke Hubertus Taurus welcomed the hearts of Swordland and co-owner Marcel Conranti for a visit to the still under construction Conranti Resort. The business magnet expresses approval at the resource progressed and its eager anticipation for its opening. I am excited to see how it does for the economy. As we saw, uh, the economy uh, economy situation of tourism, oh, regional tourist destination, was picking up. I want to see that in the green. I want to get major uh, investment on tourism side, side of things. Because we actually also completed the historical site. Um, yeah, it was one of the ones down here. So that's why our thing went to the yellow. It was because we completed like the ancient history uh, decree. Other ones we've got related to tourism. I'm not actually sure. I don't think we've really got any main ones at the moment. None of these construction ones are relating to tourism. So it's all about just military and industry at the moment. Okay, what is our next one, guys? We've got the family visit to Isa. 
But I'm going to end the episode there, guys. So if you've been enjoying it, oh, I'm very sorry to let you down. I am going to uh, record episode six straight away. So you have to just wait a few more days for that episode to come out. But if you have watched the end, thanks a million for keeping up with the series and giving me your absolute support. I really do appreciate that. Please do make sure to give the video a like if you have been enjoying it. And do make sure to subscribe if you haven't already to show that you're interested in the series as a whole. And just so I can get that last little bit of motivation to get every single episode up on the channel for this series. But anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in episode six. Ta-ra, guys.